Welcome to the History AI Podcast, where the past comes alive with facts, anecdotes, and a dash of humor. Here are your hosts, Chuck and Marco. Welcome back to the History AI Podcast, where history comes alive with a digital twist. I'm Chuck. And I'm Marco. Today, we're soaring into the extraordinary life of Amelia Earhart, a pioneer in aviation and a symbol of daring adventure. Absolutely, Marco. But before we dive into Amelia's high-flying story, let's set the scene with what was happening in the world during her lifetime. All right, let's wind the clock back to the late 19th and early 20th centuries, the era when Amelia Earhart made her grand entrance into the world. That's right, Chuck. Born in 1897, Amelia stepped into a world that was on the brink of monumental changes. The Industrial Revolution was in full swing, churning out inventions like hotcakes. And speaking of hotcakes, this was also the era when the first powered flight took off. The Wright brothers made their historic flight in 1903. Amelia was just six years old, probably thinking, I could do that. Yeah, Chuck. And let's not forget the social landscape. Women were beginning to demand their rights, with the suffrage movement gaining momentum. Amelia wasn't just going to fly planes, she was going to shatter stereotypes. The world was also gearing up for some not-so-great stuff. World War I was looming on the horizon, a conflict that would reshape nations and change the face of warfare. Talk about a rough start to the 20th century. But it did lead to advancements in aviation technology. Every cloud has a silver lining, or in this case, a biplane. True Marco. It was a time of contrasts, technological leaps, social upheavals, and global tensions. In the midst of this whirlwind, a young Amelia was growing up, ready to take on the world. And take it on she did Chuck. From a little girl in Kansas to a woman who would conquer the skies. That's our Amelia, always reaching for the stars, or at least a few thousand feet above sea level. All right Chuck. Let's take a trip down memory lane to Amelia's early years. She was born in Atchison, Kansas, in 1897, in a house that probably had more wings in its future than it realized. Exactly, Marco. Amelia was a bit of a tomboy from the get-go, chasing adventures and exploring with her younger sister Muriel. They were like the dynamic duo of backyard escapades. Her childhood was filled with imagination and daring. She even crafted a homemade roller coaster in her backyard. Talk about an early flight simulator. That's Amelia for you always a few feet off the ground, one way or another. But her family life wasn't all fun and games. Her father, Edwin Earhart, struggled with alcoholism, which caused financial and emotional turbulence for the family. Despite these challenges Amelia's mother, Amy, encouraged her daughters to be independent and self-reliant. She probably didn't expect Amelia to take that advice to 10,000 feet. And let's not forget, Amelia wasn't just about defying gravity. She had a knack for photography, poetry, and, believe it or not, shooting. She even kept a scrapbook of newspaper clippings about successful women in predominantly male fields. Talk about foreshadowing. Amelia was collecting role models before she even became one herself. And here's a fun fact, Amelia and Muriel were homeschooled for a while. Amelia's education was as unconventional as her later career choices. Seems like she was destined to chart her own course, Chuck. From crafting roller coasters to flying over oceans, Amelia's early years set the stage for her trailblazing life. So Marco, let's take off into the chapter where Amelia really starts to spread her wings, her foray into aviation. Amelia's interest in flying wasn't love at first sight. Believe it or not, she wasn't impressed with her first sighting of an airplane at the Iowa State Fair in 1908. She probably thought, it's just a plane. Exactly, but the real turning point came in December 1920. Amelia attended an air show in Long Beach, California, and that's where the aviation bug truly bit her. And bit her hard. She went on her first flight with famed air racer Frank Hawks. That 10-minute flight was all it took. She later said, by the time I had got two or three hundred feet off the ground, I knew I had to fly. Talk about an eye-opening experience. It's like going for a quick dip and deciding you want to be an Olympic swimmer. After that, Amelia was unstoppable. She worked a variety of jobs, from photographer to truck driver, to save up for flying lessons. Talk about multitasking. 
And get this, she even bought her first airplane, a second-hand Kenner Airster, which she nicknamed the Canary, in 1921. She was making yellow the new black way before it was fashionable. Her instructor was Nita Snook, a pioneering female aviator. It was like Wonder Woman teaching Supergirl how to fly. Amelia's dedication was sky high. By 1922, she had set her first women's record by flying to an altitude of 14,000 feet. The sky wasn't the limit for Amelia, it was just the beginning. And with that, Amelia's aviation career took flight, soaring towards groundbreaking achievements and record-setting escapades. Now, let's glide into Amelia's era as a pilot, where she wasn't just flying planes, she was making history with every flight. Absolutely Marco. After setting her first record in 1922, Amelia's aviation career really took off. In 1928, she got an opportunity that would change her life forever. She was invited to be the first woman to fly across the Atlantic, but there was a catch. Oh yeah, she wasn't actually flying the plane. She was a passenger, or as she wittily put it, a sack of potatoes. But hey, even a sack of potatoes can dream big, right? Exactly. Despite not piloting the aircraft, that 1928 flight made her an instant worldwide sensation. She was like the Kim Kardashian of the skies, famous for just being there. But Amelia was no mere passenger in her career. She was determined to earn her place in the pilot seat. And earn it she did. In 1932, she became the first woman to fly solo across the Atlantic, mirroring Charles Lindbergh's feet. And she did it with a bit of Amelia flair. Battling mechanical issues, icy conditions, and fatigue, she still landed in a pasture in Northern Ireland. Imagine the farmer's surprise, honey, there's a plane in our field, and the pilot's asking for directions. That's one way to make an entrance. Amelia's achievements kept soaring. She was the first person to fly solo across the Pacific from Honolulu to Oakland in 1935. And let's not forget, she also set a speed record for this route. She was like, who needs a cruise when you can just fly over the ocean in record time? Amelia was more than a pilot, she was a celebrity and an advocate for women in aviation. She helped form the 99s, an organization for female pilots. And she wrote books, gave lectures, and even designed her own line of aviation-inspired clothing. Amelia Earhart, pilot, author, fashion icon. Talk about a high-flying resume. With her star rising, Amelia was unstoppable. But as we know, her ambition would soon lead her to undertake her most daring adventure yet. Now, let's zoom in on Amelia's record-breaking feats. This is where she really starts to rewrite the aviation history books. You're spot on Chuck. Amelia didn't just break records, she shattered them like a propeller through a glass ceiling. Her first major record came in 1922, not long after she began flying. She soared to an altitude of 14,000 feet, setting the women's altitude record. She was reaching heights in aviation both literally and figuratively. Then in 1932, Amelia became the first woman to fly solo across the Atlantic Ocean. She flew from Harbour Grace, Newfoundland to a pasture in Colmore, Northern Ireland. Talk about international travel with a pastoral touch. Yeah, and during this flight, she faced some serious challenges like icy conditions, mechanical issues, and even a broken altimeter. She basically flew by instinct and courage. If GPS had existed, it would have been like, girl, where are you going? In 1935, Amelia was at it again, becoming the first person to fly solo from Honolulu, Hawaii, to Oakland, California. That's over 2,400 miles of just ocean. Talk about having the Pacific all to yourself. She also became the first person to fly solo from Mexico City to Newark in 1935. It seems like she was collecting firsts like they were frequent flyer miles. And let's not forget her speed records. Amelia was not just about endurance, she was about speed too. In 1935, she set a speed record for the fastest non-stop transcontinental flight between Mexico City and Newark. It's like she was saying, why drive across the country when you can just fly over it in record time? With every flight and every record, Amelia was proving that the sky was no longer the limit. It was her playground. And these record-breaking feats set the stage for her most ambitious undertaking, her attempt to circumnavigate the globe. Now, let's delve into the most enigmatic chapter of Amelia Earhart's story, her final flight. 
an ambitious attempt to circumnavigate the globe, a feat that was as daring as it was dangerous. Absolutely, Marco. In 1937, Amelia and her navigator, Fred Noonan, embarked on this epic journey. They planned to cover over 29,000 miles, crossing both the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans. The first stages of their flight went relatively smoothly. Starting from Oakland, California, they hopped across South America, Africa, India, and Southeast Asia, finally reaching Lay New Guinea on June 29th. By then, they had covered an astonishing 22,000 miles. But the next leg was the most challenging, a 2,556-mile flight over the vast and unforgiving Pacific Ocean, heading for Howland Island, a tiny speck of land barely visible on a map. And that's where things got dicey. On July 2nd, after departing Ley, communication issues began to plague their journey. The U.S. Coast Guard Cutter Itasca was stationed at Howland Island to provide radio guidance, but the connection was spotty at best. Yeah, it was like trying to get a signal in the middle of nowhere. Amelia's last radio message indicated they were low on fuel and couldn't see the island. It was like a real-life game of Where's Waldo, but with an entire island. Despite extensive search efforts, neither Amelia, Noonan, nor their plane, the Lockheed Electra, were ever found. It's one of the greatest unsolved mysteries of the 20th century. Over the years, there have been numerous theories about what happened. Did they crash at sea? Were they captured? Did they land on a deserted island and live out their days like a real-life Robinson Crusoe? And let's not forget the more outlandish theories. Alien abductions, time warps. Amelia Earhart's disappearance has fueled as much wild speculation as it has serious investigation. But despite the mystery, Amelia's legacy endures. She pushed boundaries and inspired generations to dream big and dare greatly. From a young tomboy building roller coasters in her backyard to an aviation legend, Amelia Earhart's journey was truly remarkable. And her story continues to captivate us, even decades after her disappearance. Amelia Earhart, a name synonymous with adventure, courage, and mystery. Let's now fly into exploring the enduring legacy of Amelia Earhart, a woman whose life and disappearance continue to inspire and intrigue. Absolutely, Marco. Amelia Earhart wasn't just a record-breaking pilot, she was a symbol of courage, determination, and the relentless pursuit of dreams, especially for women. Right you are, Chuck. Amelia was a trailblazer for women in aviation. She was a founding member of the 99s, an international organization for female pilots established in 1931. Her involvement went beyond mere membership, she actively worked to break down barriers for women in a male-dominated field. And her influence extended to encouraging women in all spheres of life to reach for their goals, no matter how unreachable they seemed. Amelia once said, the most difficult thing is the decision to act, the rest is merely tenacity words that continue to resonate today. Her fashion line, Amelia Earhart Fashions, created clothing designed for the active woman. She was ahead of her time, merging function with style, empowering women to dress for both comfort and confidence. In literature, Amelia made her mark as well. Her books, like 20 Hours, 40 Minutes, and The Fun of It, not only chronicled her flying adventures but also served as an inspiration for readers to pursue their passions. Her disappearance also led to advancements in flight and navigation technology. The mystery highlighted the need for better communication systems and navigational tools in aviation. And let's not forget the cultural impact. Amelia Earhart has been the subject of numerous films, books, and songs, a testament to her lasting appeal and the fascination surrounding her life and disappearance. She's become more than a historical figure, she's a symbol of the unyielding human spirit. Schools, scholarships, and even airports bear her name, ensuring that her legacy continues to inspire new generations. Amelia once said, adventure is worthwhile in itself. Her life was a living embodiment of that belief, a journey that continues to motivate us to explore, dream, and discover. As we come to the end of our episode, it's clear that Amelia Earhart's legacy is not just about her achievements in aviation but about her unwavering spirit, a beacon that continues to guide and inspire. And on that high-flying note, let's wrap up this episode. But before we go, remember to subscribe, rate, and share the History AI podcast. Help us keep history alive and soaring. Thanks for joining us on this journey through Amelia Earhart's life. Until next time, 
This is Marco. And Chuck, reminding you that the sky's not the limit, it's just the beginning. Step into the thrilling world of sports betting with The Starting Line, an introduction to sports betting. Whether you're a beginner or simply curious, this comprehensive guide takes you from the basics to the advanced. Learn to decode odds, develop winning strategies, and bet responsibly. Get your copy now and transform every game into an adventure. The Starting Line is your first step towards mastering the art of sports betting. Available on Amazon. And that's a wrap. Great episode, Chuck. Amelia's story never ceases to amaze me. Same here, Marco. Can't wait to dive into our next historical adventure.